Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. We're here to um, make a fox cup together. Um, there you go, a little, little curled up fox cup from our fox cup kit. And um, in the kit you get everything to make this one fox cup together with um, the glue and eyes. You get a pipe cleaner, you get the wool, you also get your felting tools, which uh, consists of our felting mat. And, uh, um, and three felting needles. The mat looks a little bit like this. It's our eco wool mat, um, which is very environmentally friendly. It's made from recycled wool. It is fully compostable once you don't um, use it anymore. And it is also um, made in the UK. And um, did I say it's from recycled wool? Can't remember now. Okay, so you get that as well. Now, um, you're watching this, hopefully, on Tuesday, the 7th of February live on our Facebook um, main page um, and um, um, and then it will get uploaded onto our YouTube tutorial. First of all I just want to say thank you for bearing with us that we are making changes obviously because uh, we used to stream directly onto YouTube and then um, restream it as a pretend live on Facebook. Um, we're not doing that anymore, we're going live on Facebook, uploading it on YouTube and it stays there as a tutorial. Um, you might have noticed that it's no longer called Make Along, but it's called How to Make. And um, that is because we want to actually pack way more um, information and um, all kinds of technical tips and whatever pops into my head, I'm just going to say, because I might take it for granted, but for you it might be completely new information. So, starting with this, I am going to tell you now that we have a very special discount code um, for you, just to um, pacify everybody that we've changed times, but maybe there are new people there who are like, wow, that's amazing, now I can watch this. So um, the discount code is um, WELCOME15, all in capital letters, number 15, and it allows you to buy all kinds of things. There are some exclusions, but uh, they, they're the usual things. And um, I will mention many, many products um, during this live stream which I know will qualify for the 15% discount. So keep your ears um, pierced and um, um, I don't even know if that is, um, that doesn't sound like quite the right English saying. Um, keep your ears open, no, keep your eyes open. Both, just listen out for it. And um, I am actually uh, sitting here sort of quietly chuckling to myself um, because that's all I can do right now because I've already done this live stream. Um, this is a pre-record actually and um, because I'm actually away at a show. The reason why I'm chuckling to myself, this is the second time I'm doing it because I forgot to press record so it appears. I swore I did it but I realized at the very end of term at the very end of making what I was making that I haven't actually pre-recorded it so I'm going to do it again hence I have got two boxes because I've just made one so because I've just made one I've come up with an idea impress us impress us with your favorite makers product favorite makers makers um, project favorite makers anything whatever pops into your head this is only applying for the people who are watching live on the 7th of february 2023 at half past five impress us in your comments say the best thing the nicest thing whatever pops in your head make me feel better for being um such an idiot for trying to record it and not record it and in exchange for that if we if I will have a personal look at some of the comments, I promise you, on Tuesday night. And I'm going to send out one of these boxes that I've made um, to the lucky winner. So do give us a really good um, comment, something that, um, something that will make my heart melt. I just need to hear something nice because I am, I've just literally wasted a whole hour sitting here talking to myself, which I mostly do, but um, obviously it ends up in front of you. But this one's gone forever, the um, the first one. This one won't, because I'm making another fox from the beginning to the end um, right now. Right, let's go to the overhead view. And um, this is what we're starting out with. We have got a pipe cleaner. Um, you can see there's the all the making of the fox already on my felting mat. I have covered this up with um, a purple felt sheet and that is because the mat underneath looks a little bit um, fibrous and it's because I cannot for the life of me find my felting um, uh, felt mat brush 
Now, um, as a hint, these brushes are absolutely um, essential when you're using our earth mats. They are the best thing ever. They are indestructible and I'm so need to clean this, uh, but I cannot find it. So I've covered it up, but you can cover it up anyway. So there's two products that I've just mentioned. In fact, there are three. One are the felt sheets. We do sell them. Two is the brush to clean, which I can't demo because I have, I can't find it. And the third one, of course, is I am using our earth friendly felting mat, which comes in two um, parts, um, a firm base and a soft top. Um, you can use them either way around. I have decided to cover mine up because it looks a little bit unsightful. Okay, so um, when you um, do it from the kit, you obviously get your felting mat. You don't need to worry about an, uh, another felting mat, but when you get really into it, you will love using our earth friendly felting mat. And uh, I should also just say that we've been using them for three years now, over three years, and they've been the best thing ever. So, right, um, there's um, a, a little bit of the brown black wool that I need to use first. There's the pipe cleaner at the ready. If you wonder what you do get in your kits, on, um, on the back of our kits, there's always an image. And this image is also on, on our website. So the Fox Cup kit um, is also qualifies for the 15% uh, discount voucher. Welcome 15, um, only, only valid from the 7th. Um, until the 11th of February 2023 and uh, so that's another product mention I have just done. You also will need to complete uh, the project some glue that does not come in the kit. We use our Stick It glue, love this. We have many people who just buy it now uh, for their hobbyist husbands because um, they use it for other things as well, modeling and all kinds of things. It is a non-toxic water-based very good quality PVA glue, but we love it because it's got that nice um, small nozzle, perfect for gluing eyes or any other um, like beaks or bird legs on, which is mainly what we use it for. Saying that, I have used it to glue on the whole house and tree for our cozy cottage and it's absolutely rock solid. So there's another, another slightly product uh, drop. If you um, haven't seen that, it has, it is a live stream available to watch on our YouTube channel. The kits are available to buy and the welcome 15 discount code applies there as well. I'm starting with the Fox now. So about one third, I know this off the top of my head because I've just done it, on um, one third down the pipe cleaner, you're gonna start wrapping a thin layer of the brown black wool, and that's gonna be the nose of the fox. So you probably don't need very much, but when you have a good area covered, you're gonna bend this in half so that the bend is covered in black because that's going to be the nose. I've got a bit of straw in there, let's take that out. Yeah, okay, neaten that up again. Now these uh, white pipe cleaners, we do call them extra strong because they are not floppy. That's what we're trying to say. They're non-floppy pipe cleaners. If I, not, They don't just like flop down and they have a cotton cover. They're made in the UK, all in line with us trying to be um, economical, ecological and, um, and trying to keep things um, with a low footprint, carbon footprint that is. So um, these are also part qualified as part of the uh, Welcome 15 discount code. When you have covered the end and you've bent the pipe cleaner in, then you're going to cover the two parallel pipe cleaners running alongside each other with the remaining of the black wool. If you go a long way there, it doesn't matter because we're going to cover everything up with uh, the main color wool, but you do need a little bit here covered for the nose. Now you're going to go and take strands of your main wool. You can use, if you're making this fox later on, again and again and again, once you've got the kit, you can use different fox colors. We have got quite a range. We've got fox, this is the muted orange. We've got fox rust brown. We've got fox rust brown variegated. We have got orange um, um, variegated, fox orange variegated. So it's all quite foxy where, um, where we are just to show you this is uh, in contrast this is the um, fox rust brown um, wool and we have a variegated version of that as well right so teasing strands off should be quite easy because you can sort of see how the fibers of the wool run and you just tease tease these off along we only need one so for now we need more in a minute but for now 
we're going to add more wool layers now to where the nose is. And just notice how I'm keeping the wool flat like a ribbon, folding it over rather than twist, allowing it to twist. I don't want my wool to twist, but I'm getting as close to the nose as I can because um, whilst foxes have got quite big noses, they don't have huge, huge noses. Um, remember, this is not an anatomically correct fox, so that you have got a degree of uh, creative freedom here. You can make it your own. We get to the end, allow the wool to sort of grip into itself and into the pipe cleaner, and then start with another strand of wool. So when you wrap the wool flat like a ribbon, try and wrap it really nice and tight. And what naturally happens, you might have already done this, you turn the whole thing round, and you can also twist the pipe cleaner and allow the wool to slip through your fingers and wrap around, wrap itself around the pipe cleaner. That way you get a nice neat wrap because you've got more control with that hand, not having to constantly going over and letting go. Um, Everybody likes likes it different, but what I would suggest is always start out the way that uh, in the direction that you started, because the wool has the habit to unravel itself if you go over it in the opposite direction. So we're going all the way to the other end now, bar a couple of centimeters. A lot of this will be covered again with more wool. So if it looks a little bit untidy, don't worry too much about it. Go back to the out, um, original direction. And then twist it, turn it over to um, wrap the wool. So once you've got to the other end, my other one is much neater anyway, you've got a little white bit left here and we're actually going to cover that in white because we want to give the fox his little white tail just here. And um, for this you're gonna now do what you did with the nose but this time at the end of the pipe cleaner so you wrap an area up, twist it in, so you've got the wool trapped here and the sharp end of the pipe cleaner is gone. Wrap the wool around the end of the tail for a white um, end. And now we're going to use the felting needle for the first time. So use your felting needle um, and just stab gently into that white tail end to felt it down a little bit um, without hitting the wire. So you can do this in two ways. You can stab a, um, next to the wire, so always to the left or to the right, or you can also stab along the wire so that you, um, you, you have the needle at a really shallow, so you can either go from the top or you can go from a shallow angle. I should also just mention that I'm using today our little caddy. Now these are really useful little um, uh, little uh, magnet caddies. People use them for sewing and, um, and 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 such crafts, but I actually use it for needle felting too. And I should um, show it should should show more products to you that I actually use that I take for granted. This is a great eye eye catcher. So if you um, if you need your eyes ready. For, um, for later, just put them on there, they don't fall off, they're ready um, and I'm, I've got them safe. So this is, this is a great way to keep your eyes safe. It's also great for your needle, however, make sure you rest it down gently because in the earlier live stream that I did, which I didn't record, I, I chucked it down and one of the eyes flew off and it's never to be found again. So uh, the needle is also staying on there and doesn't come off. Um, you can leave the eyes on there and cover it up with a lid there or um, you can't do that you can do the needle fits but the problem with that is that it doesn't stay central so if you do want to put the lid on it with a needle you have to make sure that it's pushed into the center before you put the lid, lid on because it has a tendency to slip off talking about needle uh, how do you keep your needles and where do you keep your needles? I've actually recently read that some people keep their needles in um, a candle um, because um, the beeswax um, sort of oils the, the um, tip of the needle as well. And um, you, if um, unless you don't have a beeswax candle, if it's just soy wax or whatever wax, it's fine too. And, um, and better still, it smells really nice actually when you take the needle out and then stab into the wool 
and um, that might be a nice way to another another um, way of how you can keep your noodles. Okay, there's the useful tips that I want to build lots and lots into um, the live streams, and um, I'm dying to um, to um, read all the wonderful comments that you hopefully have for me because, like I said, I need a little bit of um, of consoling because this is literally the second time that I'm doing this. Right, tail done, nose done, now we need to build the middle. And we're doing this by starting uh, to wrap more generous layers now to where the head is. I wonder which horn this fox, one of these foxes will go to. I'll, um, I'll see what the, what the third fox looks like, but look. Sweet little foxies, come on then, give us some sweet little compliments. Right, let's wrap the head up. And we normally don't do this. We don't usually give um, the makes away that are made on the live stream. But today I feel that this fox has has have to have a purpose. The fox that I made um, all by myself thinking that I was talking to you. Okay, wrapping this around. And of course I won't be able to read those comments um, until, um, well, hopefully when you're making them. Because I should be able to um, be part of the live stream even if I'm not um, live streaming if that makes sense. Right I'm stabbing now the extra layers that I've put onto the fox head with my needle trying not to stab into the um, wire and if you lose your nose a bit like I have done just stab along that part and it will pop out again. That's another tip for you everything can be adjusted with, with needle fighting. So at the moment I'm building bulk by wrapping, 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 wrapping. In a minute I'm going, when, when the fox has taken on a nice big shape, I will use the wool in a different way and I will make um, wads to add bulk to him. But for now I'm just using generous amounts of wool and then keep them nice and tight. I leave the tail um, un uncovered for the moment or it's already covered but I won't put any more on it and this is what you're doing you're just literally wrapping wool felting it down wrapping wool felting it down that's a, a constant sort of dance between the two right now and um, we're going to make more of a shape in a minute so why do you use uh, pipe cleaners inside well you can make the whole shape just from wool um, that's absolutely possible. The reason why you use pipe cleaners um, would be because you're maybe a beginner needle felter and you like um, you like a bit of help with the shaping because you can literally now bend this and it will stay that way. Um, or you might be somebody who just wants to make something quickly. This is a quick way of building a shape because you've got um, sort of definite parameters around it. The pipeline is only so long you, you can't really suddenly go co totally out of proportion. Um, or maybe you just um, you just like, I don't know, maybe you just like using pipe cleaner. It is a, it is a different technique. It, the, the bulk that you build is built differently. You have to don't do you don't have to do a 3D shaping and then put it all together. You can literally just um, wrap the pipe cleaner and adjust the shape that way. Okay, so building the um, fox up now, the fox shape. And um, so if, you, if you're making this whilst I'm making it, I, I will be honest, I'm probably a little bit faster than I was earlier on, only because I've got a slight time constraint now. But remember that you can always pause and then rewind, or you can um, just pause me and then pick up from... Uh, when you're ready to go to the next stage. So if you need to catch up by just building the body and felting it down, I'm going to let you do this because I'm going to the large screen. And this is the fox that I've got here at the moment. This is what I'm oh, this is what I'm aiming for. Okay, here we go. Slightly opposite uh, ones that way, ones that way. I also wanted to um, tell you that uh, the next live stream. Um, is obviously our um, bear, the bear, because it's Valentine's Day, yay! There we go. But 
I never do anything for my left hand side. Never have done. I think it's such a, what can I say? I, I don't like the commercial side of it. However, and this is why I don't want to push it from, from that perspective. I think you should buy a kit for yourself just to be your own Valentine. Um, and I don't think that's sad because we need to look after ourselves first and foremost before we can look after others. So the next live stream is our teddy bear on the 14th of February at half past five um, p.m. GMT on Facebook on our main page. And then we've got um, the following week, we've got the Crocus Fairy to look forward to. And then we've got um, the unboxing of the sub boxes. How on earth has that happened? I genuinely don't know. Now the Crocus Fairy, she's really sweet. There she is. She's a bit sleepy still. Um, she's got, can you just about see the wings there if I twist her? She's got these very delicate um, wings. She, um, I, 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 was, I went crocus hunting the other day because I wanted to take a nice photo of her amongst the crocuses and I expected there to be orange ones and dark purple ones and white ones and guess what? The only crocuses I could find are the exact same colour as this one and I thought oh there must be a crocus fairy goddess somewhere that was looking after me and I uh, thought oh let's just put only um, these these crocuses out for Steffi to take a photo for her crocus fairy so this is obviously is a is a makers a make along or how to make um, the week after Valentine's Day which is the 21st of February Right, going straight back to my fox here, and I'm going to build a little bit more on the head. So with needle felting, you constantly switch between different um, parts of your project. You don't just always work on one part and then um, do that first until that is one totally perfect and then you go somewhere else. You tend to sort of switch back and forth and back and forth. Now when I'm wrapping the wool, my bulk gets built evenly around um, the center of, of, of the pipe cleaner base, which is the pipe cleaner base. So what I will do in a minute is I'm going to start adding wool in more concentrated areas. It will be good now to decide which way up your fox is. Is it this way or this way? Um, and I'm going to stick with this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the underneath, which is this now, flat is flat. I'm going to felt that flat just by stabbing a little bit um, more determined into it, like this, and making sure I've got a nice flat base. I can't wait to read all the nice comments as I'm sitting here. It's like deja vu. Um, I literally have done all of this already. And I thought, how can I get around this? Can I just say, ah, we had a technical problem. Sorry, the live stream is cancelled. Of course I don't do that. Or can I just say, can I try and do it while I'm away and wing it somehow? Can I do it on my phone? Can I do it in a different format? Can I do bits and pieces and cut and uh, edit it all together? How can I do it? How can I do it? And I just think it is a demonstration of how committed we actually are to these live streams because... I um, to get this live stream to you for Tuesday. I tell you this now makes me feel really, really bad. I actually got up really early this morning because I've got to leave um, at ten o'clock uh, today, which is ten o'clock in the morning. So I got up at six o'clock. This well, I was already up and awake, but I started to get myself all ready at six o'clock this morning, just so that I have. Um, you know, have it all pre-recorded and have it ready. I have to set it all up, make sure I've got all the stuff here. I, uh, the samples needed to stay in my in my workshop here, even though they, um, I need to remember to load them, up, uh, load the sample up, because I'm going to a trade show. So I've got a, a list of things that I uh, need to make sure that I don't keep any of this behind, um, because that I would be very annoyed if I did that. So. It all takes a lot of thought and then I genuinely thought I was recording and I wasn't. I cannot believe it. So then I, I, I've, just went, I've just went upstairs. Um, I will say what I did to make myself feel better. I made myself a cup of tea. There we go. Which I'm going to drink now because otherwise it gets cold. Ah, I know I, I shouldn't really be like this because I'm 100% German but 
tea makes everything better. And even my children say, what is it about tea? I come home in the evening and I say, oh, I've only had one cup of tea all day. And I said, what's so bad about that? They don't understand. They don't understand. The best cups of teas I've ever had were after... Oh, well, they were definitely after I gave birth to four children, not at the same time, obviously, but um, they were definitely the best cups of tea when, when you hold your little baby and the, and the midwife will say, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, have a cup of tea. Best thing ever. Or when you've been or out in the cold and um, you really need to go and um, warm up and a nice cup of tea. Um, or when you're really hot. I actually really like drinking tea when, when I'm really hot. I think it's cooling as well. Or when you've been busy or when you just need to just take that moment and calm down. Let's have a cup of tea. Let's have a cup of tea. So yes, in that way, I'm very British. Um, love it, really. Anyway, um, I didn't say any of that earlier. Let's go back to the overview scene and I'm going to show you how we're adding bulk without wrapping. So you take your wool, instead of um, teasing off long strands, this time you're just teasing off little pinches or wisps, like that. And you, as you're pinching them off, you're overlaying them. So you're going to get a nice little wad here and do some more. There. And then you're going to put the wool down exactly where you want the bulk to happen. So I want this to happen around the hips of the fox, just here, and around that side. So you felt it down where the ends of the wisp sort of meet the shape. Get So don't step straight into the nice lofty um, bulk that you're trying to build. And then you can um, sort of slowly edge your way up towards it. You might have to repeat the process because obviously you've got a nice, a really lofty layer there, but that's better than having um, too big a layer and then you can't felt it down. So stub your wool down. It has definitely made a difference already. And you can um, add more wool depending how firmly you want to felt it in fox. Then add more wool and uh, repeat that whole process with a, with a layering and adding wads of wool rather than layers or wraps. <clears throat> the pipe cleaners <clears throat> can break, so please don't break, go back and forth and back and forth and bend them um, like there's no tomorrow. They, they do, you do need to be quite careful with them. Some of them are better than others. We haven't quite worked that out. I think it's a manufacturing um, issue. Sometimes they take ages to, uh, be, you can bend them back and back forth and back and forth before they break but um, uh, sometimes they're a lot more fragile so um, try not to bend them too much and all I'm next I'm going to do is I'm going to build some shoulder um, bulk here so the same way as I've just done it with the hindsight or the hips I'm now doing this um, to build a nice bit of bulk here where the shoulders are And all underneath, don't be afraid to stab it flat because it needs to lie nice and firm on the ground. There's no weight to the fox, so you need to um, make sure that that um, that he, he is really, really flat. So that the, the weight of the fox will make him naturally lie flat. That's what I'm trying to say. And we don't have uh, we don't add legs uh, because he's going to be so curled up in a minute that the legs are completely tucked under. But of course, if you want to add legs, then feel free to do that. And I'm going to add a little bit more bulk on top of the head in the same way as I've added bulk to the shoulders and the hips. So tease off the Okay, and then lay them on top. It's funny, we've been doing this for so many years now, the live streaming, and as soon as you do a change, somehow something always goes wrong, or just the slightest adjustment can cause a massive technical um, hiccup, or something something has to be done differently. So 
I, 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 I planned to go live and try to um, schedule a pre-record, which uh, went spectacularly wrong because you were all waiting for me to uh, to introduce the leopard um, on Facebook, Joan Prowse's leopard on Facebook, um, and um, it just didn't happen um, because I don't read, I don't understand really why it didn't happen. Um, Alicia looked into it and I think she's got some answers, but that that sort of stuff it just I get very easily bored by it. Um, I probably could understand it if I wanted to take the effort, but it's just I'm just too impatient a uh, person to sort of look into this. So right, so I've added a little bit of bulk on the head. You can see there's a bit of a domed um, shape there, but it needs a little bit more because um, they have quite short snouts, especially if you're doing um, a young fox. So this fox has got quite a long snout at the moment. And notice I've bent the nose up a bit. That gives it definitely a cuter appearance. But I'm going to add a bit more bulk onto that forehead here now. And um, that will help to give the fox sort of quite a, a cute young look make that snout a little bit shorter but if you want a, fo a long snouted fox that's absolutely fine you can design your own it doesn't have to be exactly how it looks on the um, on the kit picture in fact it's always very hard to get exactly the same looking um, creature twice so what I wanted to uh, make up for because it went completely um, pear shape is um, is the is the leopard is here so you've seen him already probably on the in the live stream but there he is I've got the view from above um he's he's got so many I, I don't really want to count spots I don't think um if I I don't think I would do anybody any favors if I counted the spots because you probably wouldn't ever want to make him um but he is absolutely stunning he's very solidly felted so there's not very squish in it He's got a, a fantastic tail. Look at this. He has got a beautiful face. Look at that. I hope the camera is zooming in and not just doing the background. Go up a bit. Oh, can I do that? Oh. There. Is it zooming in? No, still zooming in the background. I need to come around. Okay. Don't know how to change that. Anyway, he's got an absolutely stunning face. And there he is, so you can see him a little bit closer up. Um, he is big. He's actually really big. Look how big he is. That's quite big. Um, and he's available to make um, during the uh, masterclass on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of March at our workshops um, in um, Nelsworth. <laughs> I've made them into plural now, now that we've moved. It's only one workshop. Um, but here, here are the details. So, um, make this stunning leopard with Joan Prowse, 3rd, 4th and 5th, every day from half past 9 until half past 4. Um, you will have to find your own accommodation. The price does not include accommodation. Maybe you're local, that's absolutely fine. If you bring a friend, you save um, £50 pounds between the two of you and um, you get all the materials and all the tools um, and some to um, make the leopard. And if you've got some favorite tools, do bring them because I can't guarantee that we we have exactly those <clears throat> for you. But um, that's basically the details um, there again for you for you to see. Sorry, yes. Okay, right. And um, let's go back to the fox. Okay, so here we have um, the fox as you've seen him. I've added a bit more, and I'm going to felt that down now into um, a smoother surface. Remember, the needle needs to go in and out in a straight line for your beginner needle felter. In and out in a straight line um, and um, try and avoid stabbing yourself. That's definitely a good plan. And, um, and don't get tempted to stab too deep when you're doing a wire armature because um, the needle will definitely lose against the wire. So it might just, um, initially it might just bend, but then it will break if it doesn't break straight away. So if you feel confident you have no wire, you can stab a bit harder, but um, if there's wire, just um, be prepared to back off. And as you're felting this down, you will see where bulk needs adding. 
And if you are somebody who loves, 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 loves fine detail and you really want to stuff this really firm and really solid and have not the single bit of sort of look like it's just been needle felted, then you will love the 42 felting needles. We now have three different ones in our stock, in our product plan. Uh, sorry, yeah, products. Um, so we have the 42 crown needle, which is the super, super fine for anybody to have the, I mean, here I wouldn't even, you couldn't even tell that you're using it. Um, and then we've got the 42 twisted, which is the pink top. And then we have got the 42 standard, um, which I can't remember what color that is, but that was, that came in the advent calendar, that 42 standard. So, um, yeah, I don't know which color that is at the moment. If you know all of our colors of our needles, well done to you. You definitely know more than I do. Um, they all, it's our colors. They're not um, a standard coloring. We, we make up the colors. We decide which one and other people make up their colors. But um, our colors are always advertised on the needle product page and uh, um, they're always on the packaging whether you get them in the kit or you get um, the, the um, buy our needles and tubes. And all the needles qualify for the Welcome 15 uh, discount code as well. So do all the needle holders. Notice I'm not using one, but of course you can if you um, feel you need one. Right, the only thing I'm going to do now is I'm literally going to build up a little bit more bulk around the bum and then I need to do a little bit more on the tail. So maybe I do that first. So the tail needs a little bit more bulk. They have quite fluffy tails, so I don't want to give it the appearance like it's been totally flat felted. And uh, cut a little bit of that flush out here, that white foxy flush. It's quite a lot. And I'm just going to gently stuff that down, keep it quite fluffy if I can. We do have a tutorial if you want to scale up your fox of how to make a more realistic um, fluffy tail, which is using um, a, um, a pom-pom technique. And it, you use wool, exactly the same, but it's um, it's a slightly different um, way of doing it by using, making, making a long pom-pom basically. And it works really well on larger animals. We, in fact, we used it on our standing fox, which was one of our maker's boxes. I don't know if that is available as a PDF. Have you actually seen how many PDFs we have got currently available to download so many instructions? And the Welcome 15 applies to that too, just telling you now. So um, all these ideas, maybe something, maybe you have a whole library already of our instructions. Of course, you get a free one every month on the back of our newsletter. This month, it's the daisy that um, belongs to the cow, our maker's box, the Friesian cow. I actually call her Daisy Cow now. It's, um, that's her name. Um, I just, I really love her. I showed, I show her to you in a minute. She's a beautiful, she's so cuddly. She's a cuddly cow. A cuddly cow, I like that. A cuddly cow. Right, here we go. Fox is now probably ready to receive, um, what comes first? I've only just done it and I can't remember the eyes or the ears. Let's have a look. I think it's the ears. Yes, ears before eyes. Right. So I'm going to show you a new technique. Oh, you might have seen it, but you're going to take two same size pinches of wool and you do it now, both of them the same, because if you do one now and one later, you're going to regret it because then you've got one ear smaller than the other. So make sure they are the same and you'll forget. Later you forget. Two the same, there we go. And this is how you make an ear. So you've got your wool like this, then you fold it in half. So you've got the flat edge at the top like this. And then you're gonna fold the sides in one and then the other so that you've created a triangle. You're gonna lay that on your felting mat, hold on to the wispy ends and only stab into that triangular ear shape there. Foxes have got quite broad ears at the base, so don't make the ear too um, too pointy, too, what's the word? Don't make it too steep a triangle, if that makes sense. Make it a broad triangle. Once you stab onto your mat, 
you're going to have to lift it off gently because you will fasten it onto your mat. Stab on the other side and when you get sort of the feeling that this is becoming a felted um, shape, then stab a little bit less deep um, and get, get the shape um, done that way rather than pushing the fibers through to the other side all the time. That will make the ear thinner. Now, there is a tip, and I've, I've, I, I know people use it. I personally haven't used it, but I've, see, I've seen people use it, and it's absolutely amazing. You can actually iron flat shapes like this. You can also use um, hair straighteners to make these shapes um, shrink them. They don't shrink in size, but they shrink in fatness. They get a lot, lot thinner and very, very... Um, is such a good technique to do ears. Um, I was shown this by, by Jackie on um, the our winter retreat when she bought <laughs> the hair straighteners. I think they were specially for needle felting. She's got this special set for traveling ones. And she used them to show me how to flatten the ears of the horse that she was making. And it is really, really effective. So I don't have any hair straighteners here, nor an iron uh, at the ready, so I'm just going to be content with my ear looking a little bit fatter and um, and then you're going to put um, sort of a dark edge around it this can be less or more however you like it um, I'm only going to put this around sort of the very top of the ear and I'm going to felt this down right at the very top of the edge and then I'm going to turn my ear over and I'm going to felt it almost like around the top, the edge. So it is, it, it's meant to look very like little black wisp, whispers, not whispers, wisps, rather than um, a solid um, cover. And do this, and it, it just sort of smudges the wool a bit, which I think is what it's meant to look like. And notice that the ends here are still unfelted. It's literally just that ear, that triangular ear that I've felted. And then you make a second one. So just to show you again, you've got your bit of wool folded in half, fold one side in, fold the other side in. So you've got a nice broad triangle. Stab, stab it down only where the triangular shape is. Make sure that the second ear is the same size as the first ear. Turn it over, stab from the other side, because it will fasten onto your felting mat. And when, once you've done this, stab a little bit less deep to get the shape a bit thinner and a bit more refined and delicate. And then you're going to add the darker edge around it. Now, to if you lose that pointiness of the ear, you can sit it sort of on its side and then just stop, stab into the very edge of the ear. Mind your fingers doing that. You will be able to get that pointiness back. Wherever you stab the needle is where the reduction takes place. So can you see how you've got that back? You can do that on the one that you've covered um, it's best to do it now until you realize you've attached them to the fox and then they don't have that pointy part anymore. So, yeah. And then adding a darker color on there as well. You do get a lot of wool in our kit because you do need a lot of wool. There's actually more wool on goes onto it than you think. So uh, don't be surprised when you open the box and you think, gosh, that's a lot of wool. Um, by the time you've finished making the fox, you won't have that much left, especially if you felt it down, if you're um, somebody who felt very solidly. So we're trying to make allowances for all kinds of different um, style of felting that um, you might apply. Okay, so... Now we've got second ear done. Just make sure we've got that pointiness at the top. Neaten the edges out a bit.
And remember, I'm going to give one of these foxes, we're going to post it out anywhere, anywhere in the world. I'm going to pick somebody with um, who's, who's given us a really nice comment that will make our hearts melt. Just something that where I feel you have really, really helped me. Uh, consoling myself that I'm actually doing this now for the second time and the first time was completely wasted. Well, not completely wasted because there's a fox that came out of it that's gonna wing its way to you, maybe? Is it you? Who is it? You or you or you or you or you? Let's see. Find out on Tuesday evening. Right, that's uh, my two ears done now. Now I'm going to open up these wispy ends because that, that's what they're for. If you've got absolutely loads, you can tease some off um, as they will sort of melt into the fox's head. It, um, it doesn't matter too much that there's loads, but for other projects. I'm going to fasten these on by spreading these fibers all around the base of the ear, so all of it, and then just tuck them on with your felting needle so you can let go of the ear. Um, and just get the ear fastened on very briefly so you can adjust the shape and the position if need be. So he's got a really big ear here at the moment. What I want to do is I want to reduce the size and I want to bring that ear forward a bit like that. So where I push with my fingers, that's where I need to start with the needle. So from behind the ear, you're going to start the side forward a little bit so it's slightly curved. Do that on the other side as well. And then you're going to stab into the imaginary ear hole, which is here, basically. So keep stabbing into that area. That will reduce the size of the ear, so it will pull in the ear a little bit if you need to make it shorter. But it will also add more to the 3D-ness of the ear on once it's attached to the head. Just touching these wispy bits that I haven't felt it down yet bit more than the nose out of place. So you have an ear attached to the fox now. And um, and now I'm going to just touch it a bit more. It's quite soft there. You can repeat any of these processes. Um, it, it you know just because you're working on it um, still doesn't mean to say you can't repeat it again. And now I'm going to attach the other ear. I think I need to just bend my head up over a bit because it's and the tail goes underneath. My shape has come a little bit out of shape, but that's the good thing that you have got um, a pipe cleaner in there, um, so you can bend the shape back to where you want it. Let's get my head shape back. Right, so now I'm going to do the second ear. Yeah. Fasten it on briefly, stabbing into those wispy ends that you've spread out all around. You can felt them down a little bit neater later on as well. Let's get them get that ear down. It looks way too big and it looks a little bit flat. But then you're going to stab into the back. Yeah. And on that side. And then you're going to felt into the imaginary ear hole as well. So the ears of this fox are definitely a little, little bit bigger than um, the ones that I've done before. But you can still shrink the size down if you want to. Or if you want a, a big eared fox, that's fine too. To shrink the size, you can go into the ear from, from um, behind by stabbing along the ear shape and stabbing into the head at the same time. That will shrink the ear down a little bit. You might have to repeat some of these processes to get the ear bent forward. There we go. Big ear. This is definitely a big eared fox. I quite like them with big ears. And make sure that the base that he's lying on is flat. Yeah. So his tail is um, going to be nice and tucked in. Um, I need to definitely work a bit more on his face. If you bend the nose up, it definitely looks cute. And um, the next thing that we're going to do is, is attach the eyes. So, get 
this ears down a bit more. If you lost the shape of the ears, you can still shape it whilst they're attached. So if you needed to still stub into the ear, you can sort of, you know, lay it out on your felting mat like this still. Um, you can also add a tiny little bit of wisp of white inside the ear for sort of ear hair. Just to keep it really wispy and, and, and don't stub into it very deeply because you don't want to stub the white through to the other side of the ear. So just keep it really, really um, delicate on the side as well. If you want to give him a white beard, you can do that too. Um, this is meant to be a fox cub, but uh, do foxes do have uh, quite white uh, markings on their chest and sort of on their chin as well. So you can do that as well because he's curled up. I'm kind of not doing that with him. Um, and the eyes need to be fastened next. So. We can enhance the eyes a little bit um, um, by adding a tiny little bit of the um, brown black wool into the place where the eyes are going. That's also, that also helps to know where, where you're going to put the eyes. So if you put um, a little patch here, yeah, just keep stabbing into it, the fibers will shrink back. That will prime the area for the eye. Yeah. So just consistently keep stabbing into it. And then you're going to do the, the same on the other side. You can do this, by the way, later when once the eyes are on as well. You don't have to do this beforehand. You can add um, uh, the that, that sort of frame around the eyes later as well. If you're not sure you want it, then maybe do it later. Right, here we go. So that's where the eyes are going. And now we're going to put the eyes in. Put my handy candy, handy caddy thinking of candy, or candy already. And um, I've got these two eyes, which are a little bit bigger, I think, than the eyes that come in the kit, but I've already used them on the previous fox, of course. So have them at the ready, and you can now either poke a hole into that middle of the eye by using your felting needle, but you have to go all the way in, and the needle comes out at the other side. So make sure your fingers are not there. So that's one way of doing it. Insert the eye. Once it's in, then you do the other side. Or you can use one of our new awls. They come in, in a set of two, and they have a really nice, sharp, pointy end. Poke that in, and you don't need to go so deep because that it's fatter sooner. It's about the same thickness as the needle, but it's it you get to it sooner. And of course, you won't break it so easily because it's not so fragile as a needle. And then put the other eye in there too. So now you've got the eyes in, and then to secure them, you're going to take your glue bottle, um, stick it glue bottle, also part of the 15% uh, discount, as well as the awl. So, and then just lift the eye forward a little bit, so just enough so that you can get a dab of glue behind it. Add the glue behind the eye, push them back in, and that will make sure the eyes stay in, and they will stay in. I have tried in the past to pull eyes out that I've glued in, and it's a nightmare. So um, they, they do stay in. I should, however, say that obviously any of the needle felted um, finished projects are not toys. So um, make sure that you keep them safe, they're decoration only. And what you can do is you can actually felt the tail onto the fox so that it um, it stays a little bit more tightly curled, the whole shape does, by just stubbing from the underneath into the tail and into the fox shape. And that will sort of make it look a little bit more um, tightly curled. The whole fox looks more tightly curled. There we go. So um, that's fox number three got three now. Yay. And the fourth one in a different color. Oh dear. Okay. Well, it is uh, time for foxes to um, to be out and about. It's they're getting their cubs. I can't actually tell when which one I made when. But um, one of these three, probably not the original sample, which I can't even tell which one that is now, will make its way to one of you made by me. 
for the second time round, um, you, um, I've done this now twice. I've spent two hours this morning just on making boxes. And uh, one of them will come to a, a super good home to you. And um, I, I'm in exchange. You're going to tell me something that consoles me for having um, spent a whole hour felting and talking to myself without recording it. So, um, yes, Daisy Cow. I promised I would show her to you again. I love her because um, I love her particularly. And I, I don't know um, when, when I do wire armature. Um, for, um, creations they're not as cuddly but this one is really cuddly it's like I want to squeeze her and love her and she's so sweet she's got to stay on my desk she, I, love, I really like her I can't wait to see yours and um, of course um, it's not long before we do oh goodness me before we do the um, Unboxing of the uh, March boxes. Um, where the, where is the time going? But uh, but February is a short month, so um, that that um, obviously accounts for that as well. Oh look, she's got her little face just about in the picture. Yes, you're allowed to come in, you sweet little thing. Oh, okay, right. Um, have I missed anything? Um, we have got. So remember the discount code just for one more time. Uh, welcome fifteen. As a thank you and as a consol consolidation, as a, um, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, just just to get you um, on board, we have changed the time, we have changed the day when we're live streaming on Facebook and we're no longer live streaming on YouTube, but these tutorials will go straight onto YouTube and they stay there as a, um, as a tutorial, as a free tutorial. We don't um, ask you to pay for it. However, if you feel generous, especially on Facebook, whilst I'm um, actually on there, you can reward us with stars. That It is a monetary reward. We don't ask you. We don't tell you have to. This is entirely if you feel like it. And um, we don't judge you if you don't. And we don't judge you if you do. So um, we just, we're just we just grateful for anything that we get. A kind word, um, a smile. Um, a thumbs up, um, still subscribe to our YouTube channel, please tell people to subscribe to it, give us a like on our Facebook page, Ev um, join Everyone a Maker, our um, Facebook group, make sure you answer the three questions. Ah, ah. It breaks my heart every time I see people wanting to join and then they don't answer the questions. And um, on Facebook, if you try and find us, if you're not watching this live on Facebook at any point or already on Facebook, our Facebook handle or our Facebook name is actually at Squiggly at and then uh, the makers.co.uk. So if you want to tag us in anything, we're always grateful to uh, see what you're making. And if you tag us on Instagram, it's just at the makers and more than happy to share some of your um, wonderful uh, stories onto our story, but also anything that you share on your Facebook. Um, on your Instagram feed. Right, I think that's uh, all done and I'm still recording. Yay! I can see it now. It's not the terrible dawning moment that I had earlier. Um, so I will... Um, is there anything that I've missed? I've done next live streams. I've done next... Uh, no, I think I've done everything. I'll, I'm just going to say goodbye now. So take care, everybody. Lots of love and thank you for watching.